he doesn't know I'm here. So we're back at Fab Lab, we're getting all excited again. What have we got to do on the car to get this thing back to the track? Um, a bit of a list. We moved the engine a couple of inches forward now so to help with our wheelie situation. So nothing fits anymore, but it's going to play a bit of an advantage to us in the end. So it's worth it. Um, so new turbo, obviously everything, the whole combo's changed now. So all the pipe work's going to be done. I'm going to try Dully's big black shaft in there today. <laughs> <laughs> See if that fits. Um, I mean, we've got a new radiator core coming today, so there's heaps of stuff to do. Um, we'll try to get it going ASAP again. We're, gonna keep, we're keen to get racing again and Let's see how far we can push this bullet block. Step one, Dan's got to make up a new cross member, the one I made just to extend it forward to set it up. It's a bit on the ugly side, that wouldn't pass the Fab Lab expectations. So he's going to sort that out. I'll get in and bolt all this turbo on for good. And hopefully this drive shaft fits, otherwise I'm going to have to make a pretty embarrassing phone call to Mr. Dully. Oh, well done, Dully, it fits, mate. We don't have to send it back for um, revision two. So I've got all the oil lines made from the external oil filter down to the block. So that was one modification obviously needed going to this billet block. Pretty easy. Um, hopefully it'll clear all the radiator and fan. So at the same time, I've just put a fitting in here for the turbo oil feed up, which is when it comes back from the filter. So the oil's nice and clean going up to the turbo, obviously. And we've got another 1 8 fitting out of here, which goes around to our oil pressure sensor. So easy way of keeping them all nice and neat. So one of Dan's little tricks is he obviously knocks the top of the inlet off the turbo and the mill you would have seen before and then welds the V-band clamp. So it all sits in closer to the housing. Definitely a lot neater way of doing it. So somehow he's got to connect that to there. Lucky we got Dan on the team. This is the start of the cross member in about half an hour. I reckon it's going to look pretty magic. It won't look like two bits of angle iron anyway. Well, we got the third custom radiator core entering Fab Lab for the Celica. If this one ends up exploding, we've done some proper damage, is all I can say. So hopefully you don't have to make any more. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Big job. I've got them calls on speed dial now. <laughs> <laughs> So Dan just gets in there, shows off, starts welding upside down, no worries. Turning a $20 job into a $200 job. That's it. Lucky I'll only pay the 20. <laughs> so this is the one I made, this is the one Dan made for, for mock-up. Well done mate, let's bolt her on. <laughs> so much more room around the trans brake, solenoid. Well done Dan, we'll keep you on. Here's the list Dan's got to do. Good boy, we've got a fair bit to do, but apart from that, we'll have it up and running. Then we've got to talk old Varun into getting it on the dyno. So custom core by PWR. They make them to your specs, do they Dan? You just give them uh, the measurements? Yeah, so any, any size you want, any thickness, um, they'll make it to whatever you need. Usually about a four to six week. Yeah, about a, about a month lead time on anything custom. Righto, we've got a three inch throttle body. It's always been on the car. We're not sure if it's actually going to be able to cop the 1500 horsepower we're going to be trying to make. We've got a three inch pipe out of the intercooler Dan's welding up now. Is it going to work, Dan? I hope so. So the billet block doesn't come with a provision for the dipstick, so we've got to put one in the sun. You sure you can make that fit, Dan? I hope so. Now we've put a new nitrous fogger in underneath um, just because it's a little bit smaller so we can physically fit it. So we've changed the jet as well. So we're down to a 38 jet, it's about a 60 horsepower shot. Hopefully that will be enough to bring this turbo up. Give us a twirl there, TJ. Not bad, mate. Not bad. <laughs> right, are you K series guys? I've got something for you. These are these lead tubes we've just finished designing. We've just had them CNC made. Uh, made for the guys with the smart coils. 
best thing with these are they fit properly they're not just a forward lead off the shelf that sits really high and nothing actually holds them in these accept just a standard lead off the shelf so you just plug your lead straight through the bottom pop it out the top and from there you can get your correct length wherever you decide to mount your calls beauty with them they push in they lock in nicely they use a little stepped shoulder bolt to go in and hold them down so they can never come out great little product definitely probably the neatest thing on the market to sort of solve this problem so there's a stepped part inside this tube so the lead can physically not go any further so what you get are these cnc tubes um, and the mounting bolt all they do they accept the standard lead off the shelf you can buy at sort of any automotive store you can buy these in different lengths different diameters these accept up to 11 mil 11 millimeter wire so you can go fairly big on the wire if you want to So there's our old bumper. It used to be two pieces. It's had a few extensions over its life. Now Kapalki kit cars have made a mold off our original bumper. So then that way we can punch one out that's only one piece. So it might save a bit of weight if we're lucky. What are we up to here, Dan? Uh, making the third radiator for this thing. Hopefully this one um, doesn't explode. There have been a few known to destroy themselves in the past. <laughs> So a new core, this is the beginning of a tank. So explain what you do here. What do you make it out of? What's um, the go? Two mil aluminium tanks. Um, obviously on our rails here, we do dual passes like for this thing. So the water circulates twice through the core. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing really spectacular. You haven't done this before by any chance, have you? Once or twice. It's the last radiator this car gets. <laughs> <laughs> well, the test run, do we have faith? Ooh. Oh. It's getting tight this time. Oh. Nah, that's good. Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good. By millimetres, but we're good. Man, we've definitely lost a lot of room at the front of the motor. That's because you pulled it forward 60 mil. So it was always going to happen. Just stop our wheelie problems. I really hope it does help. Mm. Stick the little seat you got there, mate. Oh, nice. Big week, mate. Big week. So got a lot achieved. Well done, Mr. Fab Lab. It looks like we can um, just about- You're in the bus tomorrow or the day after. Well, you know, it's getting close when you're getting oil into the motor. Oh, that's a good feeling once again. Welcome back to five o'clock the next morning. Um, so obviously started up the engine yesterday. Engine sounds pretty happy. So I'm stoked about that. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a leak out of the, well, quite a bad leak out of the front of the transmission pump. So that gearbox has been away. It's had a new seal put in. So maybe something's happened there. So we'll get the box out this morning. I think old Bags is coming down and give me a hand. And we'll, um, we'll get in there and see what we can find. Dan's coming down later in the day and we'll get this radiator shroud on. You ready to lift the gearbox out, mate? Very shortly, very shortly. So the box is out, the seal looks fine. So maybe the spring's popped off the back. We'll pop this one out and we'll have a look and see what's going on. But a little bit unusual, usually you'd see something about now. Right, if you can see right there, you can see some light coming through that seal. So first glance of the seal, it actually looks fine, but there's just one little nick in it. It's hard to try and film and see it at the same time. There's one little nick right there, and that's enough to make it um, leak the way it was. So at least we found something. That's good. Last minute parts, we've got to make sure we can get this water going to the head without it leaking. We had a little bit of a mishap. Thanks mate. No worries we'll, mate. We'll see you next time. Let's get it rolling. Now for anyone that needs any fabrication on site, repairs, just give Dan a ring.
So that is the end of that. So the motor's all up and running. Bloody good start. What do you reckon, Dan? What's the next step? Next step is hopefully get it tuned this week, I guess, and see how we go. And then I don't know when we're going to be able to test because Willowbank's down and Warwick, I don't know when they're te like, testing tuned or part of test days next. So hopefully we've got a track to go test that soon. But They do have a, a no prep thing on in a few weeks, isn't it? About a month, actually. So that might be a good time to take it out, do a bit of a shakedown, make sure nothing stupid happens. So let's uh, talk to Mr. Varun at 101 nicely this week and we'll get him to um, throw it on the hub, hopefully. So what was some of the unexpected stuff we come across that we weren't planning on? Um, not really too much in my department because I knew I was in for to move the engine forward. Obviously nothing fitted anymore. It's more so on your side with all the plumbing and rerouting stuff and because it's dry deck on the cylinder head and the block, obviously you've got to run the water lines from the block to the head and, and all, that, all that sort of stuff. That's what we were just talking about before. I mean, building a car like this because it's a, a drag and drive car is a whole totally different ball game to a drag, just a drag car because you need to, I mean, ideally go from race mode to street mode with as little as possible work. You have to worry about cooling side of things Trans side of Just a quick recap. So we've changed to a billet block. That's one of the major things we've done. We've changed to a G45 1600 with a 1.28 rear housing. We've changed to eight methanol injectors now instead of four. So we've got four 520 pound and four 720 pound fuel techs. We've changed to two Alexa fuel pumps instead of one. So they're two Alexa 1380 litres per hour. Dan Fablab, he's done all the radiator, all the pipe work again. Um, he's done that about five times yeah, now. now. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, full, yeah, full aluminium exhaust actually. We've also changed the aluminium driving exhaust. So it's still steel down to the AES valve, which is just in front of the driver, I guess. Um, and then from there to the back of the car, is two and a half inch aluminium, which is just the driving exhaust. That's it for this one. Over and out. We'll see you on the next well, one. That was interesting. Break it down.